Friends, hello again. Uh, this time uh, we're going to discuss an application of verbalistic uh, work. A verbalistic thing is when you um, use buzzwords without really knowing what's inside. So the rigor, the mathematical or probabilistic rigor is absent, but yet it looks very scientific. It looks like you're working with evidence. You have beautiful p-values. Um, you may have a small effect, but you can explain it by saying, well, you know, I have a large sample and I have beautiful p-values. So let's look at this case of complete quackery. And <laughs> I was reading this book, the book by Roy Porter. Uh, I was actually rereading it. I had so many notes on it, um, on, on how medical quacks operated in the past. It's no different from the way social scientists uh, operate today. That's the experience I've had dealing with uh, Tetlock, uh, to me, uh, uh, his work is quackery, and and then of course we have um, we have work uh, just done recently in, in marketing. Let's look at the claim: having too little or too much time is linked to lower subjective well-being. That's a paper. Ah, is it true? Let's first reverse engineer their methodology. They obtain an R square of 0.003. Rule number one, when the L square is very low, smell a rat. Although it may look rigorous, what they did. Uh, and this may say, well, you know, we have a small effect. Uh, the R square is low, but statistically significantly low. Ignore all of that. Once the R square is low, I mean, model error <laughs> has uh, played a role. <laughs> Because think about it, R squared cannot be negative. So whatever crap you add in your model will help it or can help it, but cannot decrease it below zero. So that the convexity bias in the R squared. A little complicated for this discussion, but note when R squared is low, investigate. First, let's figure out what they did. Uh, you simply have a linear regression, uh, AX plus BX squared plus C with these parameters, right? Um, it's called lin uh, linear, although you have a quadratic term, because the coefficient is outside the quadratic term. You, yeah, you, you can have something like uh, like e to the minus b b x, or more more uh, commonly one plus one over one plus e to the minus uh, b x. So uh, the you can just assume that it's like you have x and then you have y. Two variable that may or may not be correlated, and each one has a coefficient in front of it plus an intercept uh, of c. Simple. Uh, they seem to have these uh, numbers. Uh, the a the uh, the first one is positive. A is positive, meaning that discretionary time has a first order order positive effect, but negative means second order too much will have a negative effect. And these coefficient seem to be um, uh, robustly uh, away from zero. <laughs> so uh, one is the standard deviation. I think it's a standard deviation in, in, in parentheses uh, of one for something like four is for standard deviation away from zero. So, uh, And I think it is Gaussian because as we'll see, the coefficient becomes Gaussian for something very large uh very large yes they have a 20k uh, more than 20k data in one of the uh, uh, studies they did uh, in the paper the second study uh, and the relationship between subjective what they call subjective well-being i don't know what the hell it is but it doesn't matter uh, they can call it whatever it is it's just the, the relationship on X is appears here to have a downward uh, slope above a certain level. And and look, if, but if you notice one thing, there's not a lot of data to the right. Okay. And when you square the term, that plays a disproportionate role in determining the coefficient. So you have this small little sampling error to change the slope, even though you may have 20,000. Let's continue to see what they did. I replicate, have the table here. I have the histogram of what they did. 
I take the histogram of the square or the variable, which is the second variable, and as you notice, it is uh, <laughs> very skewed, much more skewed, of course. The square is going to be um, more skewed and, and feather tailed than the regular distribution. And if you remember from power law discussion, that the square of a variable <laughs> has half the uh, tail exponent, meaning it's uh, a lot more um, fat tailed than, than, than uh, the original variable. So uh, I, I, there's something, the command in Mathematica, but you can use uh, the, the 50 methodology to get the empirical distribution. Uh, I got something called smooth kernel distribution, which is a smooth empirical distribution that allows me to randomize from the original sample. And how? There you go. This is a random sample, 10, 5, 10 to the 5. I can want to do 1 to the 10 to the 4. So it looks that good, 10 to the 5. You see, it is the original, something close to the original distribution that you can randomize from. Uh, distribution of x, meaning times uh, left. Now, let's test what they did uh, in this. Uh, I'll take the second one here, not the first. Uh, they, they, we test what they did. I, I created a function that takes ax plus bx squared plus c plus noise, and I calibrate the noise to get the result, 0.03. That noise that gives you the result gives you effectively the r squared distribution that they thought they had. And of course, it is far away from zero. <laughs> the R squared is almost Gaussian there. It's like, I think it's an F ratio distribution, Fischer Snedekorn, the ratio of two squares, uh, you know, adjusted by the uh, degrees of freedom. Uh, but the problem <laughs> you can see here uh, is that R squared is low, but mm, way above zero. So you can use P values, and the P value would be beautiful here. It's so far away. And here I replicate what they did. As you can see, the gets sloped down. It slopes down, thanks to that part that doesn't have to the right a lot of observations. So don't, since we don't have a lot of observations to the right, well, let's see may have an effect. As, as I explained, the factor b, the the the, the, the coefficient b, is disproportionately affected. By large values of x, because x square impacts it, so you get to calibrate it actually to the tail. That's what happens when you do a regression with a, with, a, with something very skewed, with a very skewed variable, <laughs> and you should take the quadratic uh, uh, term. So let's do a simulation of the quadratic term. This is a, effectively as they claim. It is negative point zero zero four, and you know that it's got, it's got to be Gaussian because the data, the sum, the, so much data gives you something Gaussian. And so far away from zero that it's not even funny, the beautiful p-value, that effectively the quadratic term is negative, meaning more is less at some point. Okay, beautiful. That's what they did. Now the first error is, as you explained, we forgot about the sampling problem in the tail. So you remember, look at this distribution. It doesn't have a lot of data between 15 and 25, 24. I think it starts at 24. It doesn't have a lot of data, 24 hours, uh, in, in, in that zone. They may have, I think, truncated. It doesn't matter whether they truncate or not. You know, it's, it's, uh, so the flaw is, is there, no matter what they did, whether they removed outliers. We don't have outliers here because it's Gaussian. So what happens now when I draw from that distribution? Because, you know, we have the tool. So we have the kernel distribution to draw from. You can actually do that analytically, but uh, it takes a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of, lot of uh, work. And, and as you know, very lazy. So this is what you get when you randomize from that distribution, the very same distribution that I was able to pull out from 
Not take up. Well, guess what? The quadratic term is around zero is zero. <laughs> zero. Look. Or right. the code quadratic coefficient is zero. Now let's look at the R square. What happened to the R square? Well, not beautiful. It drops big time. So this is this table shows a summary of results. First R square corrected R square, the no good. Okay. And then the quadratic coefficient, which they saw was around 0.04, is actually around zero. So, and of course, the p-values <laughs> would reject the paper. So what did we do here? We just went deep into a model. We figured out how it's built. And, and the minute you realize how something is built, you can see if there's a flaw or not. Beware skewed distribution. Even when we're talking about the most vanilla, this is as vanilla as we can get. So, is that claim correct? No. Is there a weak effect? No, there's no weak effect. Is the R square uh, significantly positive? No. That's okay, but it has to be positive. Significant? No. Is the coefficient, the quadratic coefficient, coefficient negative? No. And anybody who makes the claims that otherwise is a quack. Thank you for listening to me and have a good uh, weekend.